And that's how you get to something like this where you have meal replacements, which are sold as healthy and highly promoted as healthy. But if you look at the ingredients of this meal replacement, what you see is this uh, nauseating vile concoction of water. And number two is corn maltodextrin. Who even knows what that is? Then you have sugar, then you have milk protein concentrate, and the blend of vegetable oils and soy protein isolate. That's disgusting. It's basically a bunch of sugar, chemical, and vegetable oil and marketed as healthy. But you get that with nutritionism. After the 1977 guidelines, when we vastly, completely changed the way that Americans ate, obesity started spiking up right away. So you can see that obesity was already rising before that, but the rate at which it was rising clearly increased after this massive change in nutritional advice. And a new study uh, shed some light on this, and this is published in the British Medical Journal in 2023. And it was called The Association Between Changes in Carbohydrate Intake and Weight Changes. And this is a simply massive study coming out of Harvard Medical School. Uh, Dr. Ludwig, Dr. Willett, our key participants, they had several huge databases in the Nurses Health Study 1, the Nurses Health Study 2, and the Health Professional Follow-Up Study. And this was 136,000 432 participants followed for 24 to 28 years. And what they did was they tried to correlate the foods that they ate and how much weight they subsequently gained. So it was a prospective cohort trial. And what you can see is that for every 100 grams of carbohydrates from starchy vegetables, and this is mostly potatoes, this was associated with a 2.6 kilogram weight gain over four years, and that's about 5.7 pounds. For starches, things more like rice, it's about 3.3 pounds. For sugar, two pounds. But you got to remember that this is only over four years. So if you're eating a diet very high in potatoes over a 20 year period, you could potentially be gaining 22 pounds, which is quite a bit, it all adds up. But there were also some foods that tended to make uh, you lose weight or was associated with weight loss. If you ate more fiber, you tended to lose about 0.8 kilograms over four years. And if you ate a lot of uh, carbohydrates from non-starchy vegetables, and this, this is like leafy greens and spinach and cabbage and those sorts of things, then you tend to lose three kilograms over four years. And they also looked at the changes in the diet. So in this graph, for example, if you're eating more starch, you gain more weight. They divided uh, the groups into, into fifths. So group one has the least, group five has the most. And you can see in, 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 in this particular grouping that the, for one uh, particular uh, fiber intake, the more starch you ate, the more weight you gained. And if you look across the groups for one uh, particular uh, amount of starch, the more fiber you ate, the less weight you gained. And, and, and maybe you might even uh, lose weight because if you ate uh, much less starch, and much more fiber over time, you tend to lose weight. And the same tends to hold true for sugar as well. And this aligns very closely to uh, the carbohydrate insulin model of weight gain, which says that uh, a lot of the uh, foods that we eat stimulate hormones such as insulin, and that really plays a key role in weight gain and weight loss.